The following is for the purpose of commentary and review. Kimetsu no Yaiba was written by Kyoyahara Gotage, directed by Haruo Sotozaki, produced by Hikaru Kondo, musically composed by Yuki Kaijiura and Go Shina, developed by Ufotable, and licensed by Aniplex. Please support the official release. What sort of ideas does the name Demon Slayer invoke? For me, it's edginess, something that's full of nostalgia from the early 2000s that'll never live up to your rose-colored glasses of youth, an anime with silly throwaway one-liners, flat one-dimensional characters in terms of personality and development, villains with no good motivation or sense of purpose. But this? This suffers from zero of that. And to say that I was pleasantly surprised upon watching this is an extreme understatement. Kimetsu no Yaiba is an excellent example of what modern anime that makes no compromise looks like. Now, what I'm about to give you isn't a full-blown review, as I really don't want to spoil anything, but what I will do is give you five reasons as to why you should consider watching Kimetsu no Yaiba. Not a single expense was made in the visual department. Coming from Studio Ufotable, you know, the people that made Fate Stay Night, Unlimited Blade Works, and Fate Zero, yeah, those guys. No one should be surprised as to how much thought and passion went into this project. Yes, the character designs were made by the original mangaka. That's manga author for those of you who are less of a fucking weeb than me. But you can still see how refined they've become between the original art and this animation. This anime can be sad, it can be funny, it can give you plenty across the spectrum, but none of these departments feel second rate, and a lot of that can be credited just due to the animation. The setting and time period is very well conveyed, and nothing feels silly, unnecessary, or out of place. And I mentioned that this scenery is incredibly gorgeous. Even though I can tell a lot of it is done with 2D images on a 3D background, and sometimes with 3D set pieces, none of that takes me out of the experience. I can suspend my disbelief comfortably knowing all this. Even the 3D is incorporated in almost pure harmony with the 2D characters and even adds a little spice to the quality of animation, and again, without hurting the overall magic of the experience. And the use of classic Japanese painting styles mixed in with the battles, such as with Tanjiro's water breathing techniques. It's just, there are just so many words in the English language that I could use to say that it looks good, but from a visual standpoint, I'm going to tell you it is virtually next to perfect. The sounds that will tantalize your ears are no slouch either. Of course, since it was Ufotable, they needed Lisa or L-I-S-A, and you know her, it's this, it's this lady. They needed her in there somewhere, so she's doing the opening theme, which is an absolute banger, and is featured in the ending theme, which isn't bad either, and usually I yawn and sigh at ending themes, but this is a great exception. And while I can't exactly name any other songs by heart used so far, never have I heard a song in the show and said to myself, wow, that sucked, or wow, why did they even bother with this? Classical Japanese instruments are used in conjunction with modern instruments peppered throughout the anime. And like the aforementioned visual aspect of this show, builds upon the setting and time period in which the show takes place. And the sound effects... <laughs> I don't know why they had to make it that perfect, but they did and I love it. And any movement in water sounds like you're right in that river or that pool. None of it seems cheap or like some sort of stock sound effect that they bought the rights to. It all feels homegrown, organic, so to speak. And like all of it was carefully chosen to further the quality of the show. None of the characters in the main and supporting cast feel unnecessary, not a single one. And that's a problem that I feel that in many anime, especially shonen, have a problem trying to solve. If a character is there but for a moment, they still have a purpose, whether to add exposition, develop an important character further, or add to the story in any way. Even characters that can be seen as annoying have some soul in them. Zinetsu being a great example, a timid, womanizing idiot of a warrior who was his own worst critic. And then there's someone who had no sense of self who begins to gain that and realize what it means to be human. 
such as the wild man, Inosuke. Even the villains can be seen as pitiable and victims to circumstance, rather than a simple-minded monster hell-bent on destruction. And if they are, there's always a reason for it. Backstory gives these people a soul and give very empathetic moments that some anime just don't quite capture. And this brings me to my fourth point. The show will make you feel something. I know that sounds incredibly vague, but I don't think it'll make everyone cry like I did. But I had tears well up when I didn't realize they could. These tender and very human moments make me love our heroes, pity our villains, and celebrate every little victory. Tragedy is never just for shock factor that makes your skin crawl. It's to strengthen a character's resolve to show you how ruthless this world is and to draw you in further to the story. And it won't ever desensitize you because there will be something else to come along to turn your emotions on their head. And then there's this kid. Tanjiro Kamado. How long has it been since I've seen the perfect shonen protagonist? What makes a perfect shonen protagonist, you ask? It's simple. They're the example of what a hero should be. They're supposed to be an inspiration to youth, and to spark passion in young hearts for generations. Now that may seem incredibly melodramatic, but you have to understand, I grew up watching yelling and punching without mercy in my days of youth. Yes, Tanjiro becomes a deadly force to be reckoned with, but because he has to. He rose to the occasion to protect his beloved sister and to save others, all while reminding himself that he has to do all this for someone else. He's selfless, gentle, kind, he doesn't solve all of his problems with fists, and while he admits his weaknesses, he never gives up, and he works to strengthen himself beyond his limits. And if that isn't what a hero should do, then I haven't a damn clue as to what he should be doing differently. Oh, and for my super secret sixth reason, Nezuko is the cutest thing in anime right now, and I love her. Always protect, 100%. And that's it. I'm not going to tell you anything else. If I get enough demand for it, I may make another video about it once more episodes are released. But until then, that's all for me for now. So, this has been Sir Fluffy the Ninth. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around. Bye.